Hi everyone, welcome to Lucilva's Cooking. This is my absolute favorite version of the many spaghetti meat sauce recipes I've made over the years. And when you try it, you will never want to make any other recipe. And I'll start by preheating my large saute pan on medium heat. When my saute pan is hot enough, I add one and a half pounds of ground beef. I like to use ground round because it has 15% fat. Not too much, not too little. It's just right. I don't put any oil in my pan because the meat I chose has enough fat for me to be able to saute all the ingredients. You don't have to mash the meat completely. You can leave some chunks of meat. They add more flavor and interest to the sauce. I increase the heat and stir until it browns a little bit. It doesn't have to brown completely yet. To this juice and meat fat, I add one medium yellow onion, finely chopped, and two thirds of a small green bell pepper, which is essential to the flavor of this sauce. Mix it all up and let it saute for about a minute or so. Now here comes one of the most important ingredients in this recipe, five large garlic cloves that I grate over the pan. I always do it this way. Fresh garlic is a must have in this amazing sauce. You are going to taste it when it's ready and it's delicious. Keep stirring to incorporate and cook the garlic, the onion and the green pepper. The perfect trio by far. It's already starting to smell real good in here. If the ground beef you use has too much fat and sometimes ground round dust, remove the excess fat, okay? I'll open up a spot in the center of the pan and add two teaspoons full of tomato paste and fry it, slowly incorporating it with the meat and all to better extract its flavor. Another important ingredient to the flavor profile of this sauce is two beef bouillon cubes. I prefer nor because it's more dense and makes the sauce creamier. I break them up into small pieces like this and fry them just like I did with the tomato paste. If you don't want to use beef bouillon cubes, you may add salt instead, a seasoning that contains salt or any seasoning that you like. It's a little dry now and you may add a little water to it or some of the fresh tomatoes in their juice and mix it up. This is how I prepare the tomatoes. Here I have five medium ripe tomatoes and this is what I like to do in order to remove their skin. I make a cross cut on top and another one on the bottom of the tomatoes like this. I boiled some water in a medium sized saucepan and I placed the tomatoes in it one by one so I can remove their skin more easily. But I don't leave the tomatoes in hot water for too long. It takes about 30 seconds or until I see that the skin is starting to peel off. Then I turn off the heat and transfer the tomatoes to a bowl with ice water to stop them from cooking and to make it easier for me to handle them later. Then I start peeling the tomatoes and look how easy it is to remove the skin now. I also core them. You may use the tip of a sharp knife or a cute little gadget like this one and I'll place a link for this and a few other items I use in my videos and my everyday life in the video description. I cut the tomatoes into four sections. I put the seeds in a fine mesh sieve on a glass bowl so I can strain the juice that comes out of the outer part of the seeds because I don't want any tomato seeds in my meat sauce. If you don't mind tomato seeds in your sauce, you may skip this step. But I don't like tomato seeds, so my life is a little harder. <laughs> Here are all the seeds and I just pressed them into the sieve with the help of a spoon so I can remove as much juice as possible out of all of that. I extracted as much juice as I possibly could, so I'll just toss the seeds now. And look at the amount of juice I got. Then all I have to do is chop the tomatoes into small pieces, which is what I prefer, and place them into the bowl that contains the juice. This is going to flavor the sauce better than anything. But if you don't want to use fresh tomatoes, you may use 30 ounces of the canned tomatoes of your choice. After mixing in a little bit of the tomatoes, I am ready to add some of the dry seasonings. I love this all-purpose seasoning right here. I use it in a lot of my dishes, so I add one tablespoon of it. 
I also add one tablespoon of garlic powder to enhance the garlic flavor. One tablespoon of onion powder to enhance the onion flavor. And one teaspoon of paprika. Turn the heat down and stir it a little bit. Develop those flavors. Add the remaining fresh tomatoes and their wonderful juice and stir. Now I'm going to add one teaspoon of Italian seasoning. I put it in my hand and go like this to enhance its flavor. Mmm, it smells so good. Give it a little mix and add a little freshly ground black pepper to taste. Now I can add two cups of filtered water. I don't use tap water because it has an off flavor, at least here in Florida. So we have an awesome filter. If you're enjoying this recipe, please take the time to give it a thumbs up, share with who you believe will love this hearty sauce, and subscribe as well. I have a variety of recipes and I always place the list of ingredients in the description of my videos. Now I add a couple of bay leaves. I love this brand. I'm not sponsored by it. I'm not sponsored by any companies. It's just that when I find a good product, I let everybody know about it. See how these bay leaves are green and whole? I used to only find brown cut up pieces and that's not good. So when I saw these at my local supermarket, I got them. It's expensive, but it's good and it lasts. Hide them in there so they can do their part in this super tasty sauce. Now here comes the secret ingredient, ketchup. Yes, have you ever used ketchup in your spaghetti meat sauce? I add two tablespoons of it and half a tablespoon of sugar. If you don't want to add sugar, you may add a medium carrot cut up into small cubes and add it to the sauce in the beginning when you add the onions and the green pepper. When the sauce cooks for about five minutes, I taste it and see if it needs anything. This sauce is delicious already, perfect, but since it is going to cook some more, I'll add another cup of water. Mix it well, cover, and let it cook for 10 minutes undisturbed on low to low medium heat. After 10 minutes, remove the lid and stir it a little bit. It's starting to look so good already and they smell. I taste it again to see if it needs anything now that it cooked a little more. It's still perfect to me. Let it cook for another 10 minutes. Then remove the lid and stir it again. It's so succulent and appetizing. It's getting thicker, full of body, and absolutely wonderful. Meanwhile, I will start the pasta cooking process here. I filled my large saucepan almost halfway with water. I add about two tablespoons of salt, stir it a little bit to help dissolve the salt, cover the pan, turn the heat on high, and wait for it to come to a boil. Keep an eye on it, it won't take long. It's time to check on the sauce and stir it again. What a delicious sauce and the smell, especially when I remove the lid. This sauce is full of body. Everyone who tried it loved it. I used to put this sauce in my slow cooker, put the spaghetti in a container and take it to work. Needless to say, at the end of the day, there was nothing left. They would eat, repeat, and go back for more during our second break. When the water starts boiling, I add half a pound of thin spaghetti and I don't let it stick because I start stirring it immediately. And I only add it to the water when it's at a rolling boil. It's a combination and there's no need to put oil in the water. I taste the water to see if it needs more salt and it does. So I'll add a little bit more and stir. I like the water to be salty, but not extremely salty. Just enough to flavor the pasta before I put it in the sauce. After stirring the spaghetti for about a minute and seeing that all of the strands are separated and rolling wild in there, I stop stirring. And now I'm going to let it cook for eight to nine minutes because I don't like it too al dente. I'm going to check on the sauce again. I know you all can't stand it every time I remove this lid because it makes your mouth water, but I have to stir it. If you make this sauce, please let me know if you like it. And if you do, 
Spread the word with the ones you think will love it as much as you do. I stir my spaghetti a little bit too. It's still on high heat. I turn the heat down to medium, put the lid on like this, and let it finish cooking. Now it's time to remove the bay leaves. Let's not forget to. Can you imagine? You're eating this amazing delicious sauce and all of a sudden you bite into a bay leaf. These bay leaves are big, but some of them you find around may be smaller and easy to miss. So be careful. Okay, so now the spaghetti is done to my liking and I'll just add it to the sauce this time. Sometimes I like to pour the sauce over my spaghetti, but either way, they end up getting mixed. The difference is that when you add the spaghetti to the pan like I am doing, it's going to soak up a lot of the sauce. So I just add a little full of pasta water to keep it more on the moist side. And then slowly incorporate the sauce into the pasta without breaking it. Look how delicious and mouth-watering this is. And I like a lot of meat. If I am calling it meat sauce, I am going to add a lot of meat like the good Brazilian that I am. Nobody deserves to eat just a little bit of meat in an awesome dish like this. Do you agree? So delicious, everyone. What do you think? And this little bit of pasta water is going to be absorbed by the pasta and you will be left with a thick, amazing meat sauce. I don't want a dry meat sauce. How about you? I also like to sprinkle it with a little grated Parmesan cheese. Everyone has their favorite kind. And that's it. I'm going to make my plate. This is one succulent spaghetti meat sauce. Oh my. And the flavor is like no other. It's different than any other spaghetti with meat sauce that you ever tried. Probably. And here's a suggestion. I also think this dish goes well with a little bit of chopped parsley or chopped cilantro leaves. And to those who like it, a little Louisiana hot sauce enhances the flavor even more. Now it's time to taste it. What a delicious dish. Yum. So tasty. Fantastic. And the bigger chunks of beef make it even better. A little more meat. Why not? Today is your lucky day because you found my video. Spread the love around by recommending it to everyone who deserves it. Your family and friends. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time. Mmm, amazing.